Welcome back. This Tuesday morning, let's get you all the updates coming in from Ukraine. We're not taking our focus away from what's happening in the war. It's been 55 days of the conflict now in Ukraine. The offensive of Russia has reached Lviv in West Ukraine, which witnessed multiple airstrikes on Monday. Seven people reportedly were killed. Multiple injuries were also reported. Kharkiv also witnessed strikes. Two people died in the shelling. Multiple vehicles were damaged. In Irpin, a suburb of Kiev, where Russian forces retreated mass graves were found showing the severity of the destruction the death that's been reported in the city russia has claimed to be close to capturing mariupol completely the besieged city painting a horrifying picture as bodies are seen strewn all over in recent days russia has shifted focus towards eastern ukraine and is planning to launch a full-blown offensive of the rebel-held donbass region ukrainian forces are putting up a valiant resistance in the face of russian aggression Putin, however, has shown no sign of backing down. Referring to the Western sanctions, Putin claimed that the West has only hurt itself and that they've completely deteriorated their own economy in the process. And here's a ground report filed by Moshmi Singh from Zaporizhia, from a hospital, to show you how civilians have been, in fact, affected because of this conflict. So India today is trying to bring out the real story from the ground. And we are in a hospital in Zaporizhia that has seen a heavy influx of uh, people injured from the war, civilians, children, women. And this story is a living nightmare that we are going to talk. Of course, we have taken permission from Lesa and Vita. Now, Lesa and Vita from Hulepole, and Vita uh, was just uh, her entire bandage was changed. You can see that this is uh, the injury, sort of injury that was caused to her. She was shot by Russian soldiers right here. Uh, the entire inflammation spread because she was also operated by apparently some uh, Russian uh, quack doctor who stitched her and then the inflammation got worse. Vita will show you his, his bullet injury. In Holepole, they own a big house and the Russians, in fact, bombed it. And after they had bombed it, uh, they went back to get their documents. They went back to get their passport, both of them. And when they were at the basement, the Russian soldiers started firing. She got the injury right in her stomach, the bullet in her stomach, and Vita is been living a night of horror. She has been uh, recovering in this hospital when the Russians, uh, they didn't want her to go back to Ukraine. They kept on saying, get uh, medicated, get treated in a, a Russian hospital, Russian surgeons. But her situation kept uh, deteriorating and kept on oozing out of her body. Kept, she kept losing blood. And that's one reason that neighbors helped her to actually come uh, to this hospital in Zaporizhia. This is not the only story, a story of horror, uh, of killing of civilians and alleged uh, shooting of civilians indiscriminately is what we see here in the Zaporizhia hospital. And a few days ago here on India Today, we gave you details of how Russia suffered its biggest setback yet in the Ukraine war when its lead warship, Moscow, was targeted. There was a fire on board. Russia maintained it was a result of a storm. Ukraine said that this was a targeted attack by them. The first images have now emerged of this sunken ship. Take a look at this next report. An unthinkable image for every Russian. A sight that will sink millions of Russian hearts. Just days after Russia's Black Sea Fleet flagship sank, the first image has emerged of the stricken vessel of war. Once an icon of Russian pride, seen in these final moments last week, listing dangerously to one side, after either being hit by Ukrainian missiles or a devastating explosion on board. Let's try and decode this first dramatic image of the stricken 13,000-ton guided missile Russian cruiser. The most obvious is the smoke billowing out of the superstructure. Clear signs of fires still blazing below deck. Also notice how the ship is listing dangerously to one side. 
confirming structural damage from the explosions. If the Moskva was indeed hit by a pair of Ukrainian Neptune missiles, then they appear to have smashed into the ship in this frontal area, just behind where the ship's own P-1000 Vulcan anti-ship missile launchers are located. Notice these gaping holes in the hull of the ship? Some of the strongest evidence that a missile strike is likely what doomed the Moskva. These appear to be impact points for the incoming Ukrainian sea-skimming missiles. There is also clear smoke damage in the rear end or the aft of the ship, suggesting that this photograph was taken after a much larger fire consumed the vessel. The picture of the doomed Moskva has clearly been taken from another Russian vessel, one of many that converged for rescue operations. While this new image of the damaged Moskva answers many questions about where the ship was hit and where was the damage caused, several questions still remain unanswered. While this new image of the damaged Moskva answers many questions about where the ship was hit and the kind of damage that was caused, several unanswered questions remain. Questions that will hopefully be answered in the days ahead. For instance, how did just two anti-ship missiles sink this huge ship? Why is there total silence on the condition of the 510 crew who were reportedly evacuated? Did the Ukrainian missiles cause a fire detonating ammunition on board? If the fire was accidental as Russia claims, why is Russia talking of retaliation? And finally, why are families of the crew on board so conspicuously unheard and unseen? With the Moskva, Russia has lost more than just any military platform. It has lost a piece of its legacy and military heritage. With Mosmi Singh in Dnipro, Ukraine, Bureau Report, India Today. Now, since the beginning of this conflict, on numerous occasions, Russia has resorted to nuclear saber rattling, with even the Russian President Vladimir Putin warning that Russia could use the nuclear weapons if they push to a corner. Interestingly now, a Ukraine rebel lawmaker has also in fact put the honors and demanded and called for a nuclear war. Over nearly two months of his invasion of Ukraine, Putin has consistently amplified the nuclear threat placing the world's biggest nuclear weapons arsenal on operational alert and putting the world on nuclear notice. The threat of nuclear war has been repeated endlessly by his top team. Everybody understands that World War III can only be nuclear. And now, a call for nuclear war has gone out from a Ukrainian politician. This telegram post by Ukrainian MP Ilya Kiva has triggered a fresh storm during the conflict. Ilya Kiva, to be sure, is a controversial figure who was elected as a member of Ukraine's parliament from a pro-Russian opposition party. After the invasion of his country, his continuing pro-Russian rants got him sacked as member of Ukraine's parliament. No one wants to understand. The Ukrainian government consists of buffoons, screenwriters and video clip editors. With things heating up, he is reported to have fled across the border into Russia. Kiva is seen as a villain and a monster in Ukraine now. But his fresh, alleged calls for a nuclear attack on his own country may just be the last straw. The ex-member of parliament is already in trouble with his country, with Ukraine's prosecutor general declaring that he is to be placed on an international wanted list for his violent comments against his own country. On March the 6th, in fact, Ukraine's prosecutor general accused this motormouth former MP of causing enormous damage to the state of Ukraine with actions and statements and doing everything in his power to invite the Russian aggressor into Ukraine. The tone, tenor and comments of pro-Russian politicians in Ukraine has become an exploding issue in the war-torn nation, with no mercy likely to be shown. And Ilya Kiva's alleged calls for nuclear war on his own motherland appear to reflect 
just how desperate things have become. Bureau Report, India Today.